I'm making Woo! weird hands. That must mean that it's time for This Week in Esports. Hello and welcome to the 17th of August episode of This Week in Esports. That was hard to say out loud with my voice. I was impressed. Thank you, you kind of nailed it. Almost. Oh, I'll take it. Ish. Well, it was we're on the edge of I will, nailed. You know what? I'm going to say, I'm going to say, Nailed it for a Thursday. Coming to you live from the Microsoft <laughs> campus here in Redmond, Washington, and we're showcasing Mixer Magic. Talk to me a little bit about Mixer Magic, my lovely and talented co-host, oh. MK Ives. Well, I actually work in the Mixer, Mixer Partnerships Department, so I Seems do like have kind right of a little uh, insider knowledge here, but um, FTL is our unique protocol for streaming at sub-second latency, so we're That's basically right. talking to you in real time. Viewers don't just watch, they actively participate what's in what's happening on the screen, and we can do that with these, um, these polls. We're gonna have mm -hmm. you guys help us decide what to talk about. It's true. So obviously nowadays, eSports bigger than ever. And with it comes a lot to cover, especially during these summer months. Mm -hmm. How do we decide what we're going to talk about, what you're going to hear about, what we're going to say? <laughs> well, <laughs> that is up to you with those polls that MK just mentioned mm -hmm. earlier today. So you'll see uh, in your chat window, you'll see those options uh, come up to vote for different stuff to talk about. Of course, you know, I'm betting we're going to be talking a little bit about Dota 2. I mean, 99% sure mm -hmm. we'll probably talk a little bit about the COD World League Championship. We'll see what's going on, CWL. But at the end of the day, it is up to you guys. So if you really don't want to see COD coverage, you got to vote for uh, there not it is. COD. <laughs> exactly. And of course, another reminder, we only got 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Time is money here, people. People. Make it snappy. And of course, that means we only have 30 minutes, so some things don't make it in. So this is your first and only PSA to say, out. But before we get into the segments that we have for this week, normally start a show with a special segment. This time around, we're calling this, This Week in Esports, On Location. Mm -hmm. So... What is I know? To be we on actually, location. Exactly. We should have practiced that, but yeah, well, why we would we? We could have that We a just bit better. produce magic there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so to be on location for short is where we get to bring live events that you couldn't attend yourself straight uh -huh. to your monitor or TV or phone, whatever, whatever, you're, whatever you're, you're watching this magic yeah, on. Exactly. And so for our first time, we were lucky enough to attend a little event in Seattle so. last weekend called The International. Features one of Valve's pre premier games, Dota 2. True. Yeah, you uh, you might have heard of it, seeing as the first place winner, Team Liquid, uh, garnered mm -hmm. uh, themselves almost $11 million in a prize money. Craziness. It's true, it's true. Well, esports events are something that everyone must attend at least once in their lifetime. That is something we all agree with here, and I think you will too. So let's check mm -hmm. out some of the B-roll that we've got for you from the actual event itself. Now... I was actually there with what with our fabulous and talented producer Lennox, yes. who is also behind the camera at this point. And I can tell you, so Key Arena, it holds about what do we say, 15, 17, 16, 000. 17 thousand mm -hmm, people. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that this sold out in mere moments. Mm -hmm. So it's very hard to get tickets. Exactly, twenty teams started this escapade. They, I think they introduced, they, um, uh, boo, boo, boo. they invited six teams. Mm -hmm. Had a total of uh, sixteen teams that, were, that ended up, or excuse me, twenty. That, boy, you know what? You never know about stuff today. <laughs> At any rate, there were not that many teams. This is a premier mm -hmm. event for sure. Only mm -hmm. two teams themselves that actually had never been to a Valve event. The first time we'd ever seen a mm -hmm. Dota, a uh, Dota team from South America was this time with, yeah. uh, with uh, I can't remember the team's name, but they are fabulous. Really exciting to see uh, South America uh, represented, especially considering it's typically EU and Asia mm. that really hold sway here. And I'm glad you mentioned EU and Asia, because that's what we'll talk about here in a second, because that's really what it came down to. Now, there's also something that we like to, to mention here, I think. You'll see some of these different teams that represented there with the fabulous flags. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, uh, there is a thing with Dota 2, specifically with the international, every other year. It is won by a Chinese team. And this year was no different. Mm -hmm. This year, actually. So last year's winner was Wings Gaming. Which was the first time North America had ever taken it. Is that correct? Actually, no. Interestingly enough, North America took it once. And I love this. This is exactly right. Took it the TI-5. With oh, Evil okay. Geniuses. Sorry. Yep, Off by yep, one getting year. Getting it mixed up. But we're, would, at yeah, up, we're up to yeah. seven now, MK. So mm -hmm. at this point, I'm fine. Also, our... our Producer wanted us to mention that $13 for a Philly cheesesteak <laughs> yeah. was a little bit of a riot. Yeah. But yeah. welcome to stadium prices. Mm -hmm. It's a premier event. What are you going to do? Not have the cheesesteak? So, at any rate, <laughs> you can <laughs> vote on that giggle. if you want to. Yeah. I don't think vote we'll need it. Vote for cheesesteak. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, at any rate, I will say that having been there myself this year, um, I had been, both of MKU and mm -hmm, I had both mm -hmm, been there mm -hmm. last year. Yeah. Um, separate things. I can... 
It's it is electric. It the is definitely energy. one of those events that you must 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 see at some point. And mm -hmm. I love this bird's eye view because it was on ESPN two, mm -hmm. as well as a number of other media outlets. But it's really cool to see this sort of bird's eye view. You see key arena completely packed with fans. It's exactly. and it's so loud in there. It's like any other sporting event. You know, way back in the day when we oh, still sure. had basketball, the Seattle SuperSonics uh, played here. That, yeah. Yeah. That was a nice time. Oh, oh. It's true. But I will <laughs> but, okay. say, yeah, what we're seeing here are the walk-ins. And I will mm -hmm. say that something else that eSports does, I mean, I'm not going to say better. It's an apples and oranges conversation. But one of the things they do great mm. is the walk-in. They are like, they are they are up to, it's like, like you UFC. You'll notice, actually, that um, the uh, Liquid's um, captain there actually fist pumped that staff member. He did it every single time. This is them receiving the Aegis. So if you've ever played mm -hmm. Dota, if you've ever seen Dota, the thing they're going for is the Aegis Cup. And that is something that they got to hoist. I'm getting goosebumps because I was right there. Ooh. It was incredible. Yeah. And Pyro, yeah. I mean, I'm telling you right now, spared no expense. You can also see mm. those little lights that went off. Those are little bracelets that they give people and they went mm -hmm. off. They uh, go off in, in uh, coordination yes. together to light up the whole stadium. It's And just the energy, the noise, it's crazy. It's All the true. fans. And oh. I will say, here's the thing about Team Team Liquid, obviously from the EU. Um, a great, a fantastic story. We'll talk more about that if you guys decide to let us. Oh, please. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. But it has been it is an incredible opportunity for people to mm -hmm. see how great uh, esports can be. And quite frankly, Going home with a cool ten million and change yeah, yeah. for a five-person crew, you know, yeah. they earn it. Obviously, Doing okay. here's another fun fact. By the mm, way, speaking well, I like of fun facts, I'm telling you. Speaking of Valve money and gaming, Valve announced a few days before, prior mm. to the international that they're going to have eleven majors and eleven minors this year. So that means, and each Ooh. of those has to have at least a minimum. Each of the majors minimum prize pool of one million doll hairs. That's a big deal. This year, I think they had three, maybe big four. Big money in Dota right now. Yeah. We got you. Mm -hmm. At any rate, MK, what are we talking about now? What do we got? We have a couple of options here. We were voting on Overwatch, Call of Duty, FIFA, or Dota 2, and Aye! no surprise there. Might I jump into this? Please be my guest. What a wonderful evening. Okay. <laughs> Dota 2. I'm not sure why I went for the Mario Poppins there, but you know what? <laughs> Thank you yeah. for what that one, too. Okay, so Dota 2 International, which we just talked about. It covers all the fighting and cheering. That was a story of redemption mm. for one team. Oh, team, team Liquid. Liquid. Oh, they lost the first round of upper bracket to uh, IG, and they were sent immediately to the lower bracket, which oh, it's kind of it's like a knife in the heart. It's so. a, it's an up and down. We saw a lot of that this weekend, actually. Mm -hmm. If we get to talk about COD later. Oh, hey now. Now with each of the game, uh, the blah, 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 blah. Team Liquid knowing they couldn't lose a single round or they'd be headed home, so that is a mm. do or die. The entire the time. The pressure there. is on. You don't get a break. They fought it's their true. way through five teams and all the way to the grand finals against Newbie. In I mean, like, why would you Newbie. name your team Newbie? I, I mean, mean that it seems like ironic bad luck because right there. I think mm. Newbie is, has been at almost every TI. Right. Yeah. So recall. so and then in a best of five and they won three nothing. Yeah, like not swept it. It's incredible. So Team Liquid saw elimination and kept sprinting from it. I want to repeat, not to remind to repeat last year's international where they got knocked out round three of the lower bracket. We saw a lot of early knockouts. Mm -hmm. Puppy, sorry, Team Secret. Oof. Just a, a number of uh, really great, um, fabulous talents that unfortunately mm -hmm. were taken down early. But that's okay. That so, means yeah. people rise. After last year's TI6, Team Liquid knew they had a long road to, to climb, like up the mountain. To Scrappy redeem stuff. themselves, like crawling up that mountain. Exactly. Now, after their fifth place win at the Kiev Major, which was the major prior to the International, mm -hmm. uh, they realized they needed to step up the game. They wanted to invite to the International. Of course, Valve does the invites. Right. Last year it was eight. This year it was six. Cutthroat all the way. Yeah. They needed a spot in the land finals of Dream League Season 7 to have a chance at the International. They had their hearts set on it. They got second in European Division, and then they won the Star Ladder I-League Invitational, followed by them defending their title at Epicenter. Exactly. Now, those two land wins are what sent Team Liquid to the International, topping off with their win at Dream League Season 7, winning three consecutive land events and paving their way to the TI-7. They fought hard to be where they're now, and they, they showed that they deserve that first place title and that whopping $10,862,683 that comes with it. Wow. I will say one yeah. of the funniest moments of that grand finals was actually after everything <laughs> when Team Liquid was trying to open the champagne bottles. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if you moment haven't seen for, it. Moment for the ages. You real, oh, Look moment that for up. the ages. <laughs> Puns. Okay. Oh, ages. What do we got now? Let's okay, find out. Are, Drum roll, please. On? 
Of course, we had Call of Duty, which obviously MK is gunning for, which yeah. I love. FIFA, Overwatch, Quake. Yeah, you heard us. Oh, Overwatch and COD tied? Hmm. So we're, we're going, going to Overwatch. Overwatch. That's All right. fair. All right. Okay, as if Overwatch didn't already have enough going on, yeah, Blizzard no recently announced all the fun tidbits around the next season of their development league called Overwatch Contenders. This will be the place to view the up-and-coming players who want to eventually join the ranks of the Overwatch World League, which is due later this year. Now, the previous season of Overwatch Contenders recently concluded in July with Team E United winning on the EU side, Team Immortals claiming the top spot in NA. For season one, the format stays roughly the same except for a few key differences. There will still be two regions, Good. NA and EU, and uh, each region will have eight teams fighting over a $100,000 prize pool. Why not that? Yeah. Contenders, challenger teams, let's go for it. Now, for you Overwatch sleuths, you'll notice that's double what was offered per region in last season, so kudos to Blizzard mm -hmm. for providing mm -hmm. more moolah to those aspiring pros. Yeah, Overwatch money. If you head on over to overwatchcontenders.com, there's a full list of the 16 teams who will be participating in season one, but we do, of course, have to call out a couple of favorites, like mm -hmm. Envious and Rogue, the only two invited teams, and then powerhouses like FaZe Clan, Detroit Renegades, Misfits, and Laser Kittens to join the roster. Between Laser Kittens and the Muffin Men, Mm -hmm. Fun but sad fact, Team Laser Kittens was acquired by Cloud9. Mm. It's not sure if they're going to keep that name, which means... Prayers for Laser Kittens. And listen, Kittens. I was going to say the Muffin Men, which <laughs> if anyone here is into Rocket League, they were recently acquired, but they got to keep their name. Oh, okay. Well, that's setting and some precedent. And hopefully they'll be, be sending me a hat or swag of some kind that I will wear proudly. Moving right along, the Season Zero winners we mentioned before, E United and Immortals, will be back in the mix, and it remains to be seen if they can replicate the previous season and take home the top crowns for their region. Yeah. Now, the best thing about all of this, Overwatch Contenders, starts this weekend. Exactly. Season 1 begins this Saturday on Twitch and MLG.TV at mm -hmm. 10 a.m. Pacific. That, of course, would be 1 p.m. Eastern. That's fast, mm -hmm. fast. Mm -hmm. And we'll be online for the next six weekends. Starting on week three, Blizzard will be adding a Friday broadcast. And hey, nobody's mad at watching even more Overwatch. I'm, yeah, I'm not mad about it. At the end of the season, the top four teams in NA and EU will meet at an offline event mm -hmm. to crown the champions of the season. Battle, mano y mano y... Mm -hmm. Six other monos. <laughs> You'll be able to watch both regions on the same day, so make sure you tune in and cheer on your favorite Overwatch teams and report back here for a recap on the event in case you happen to miss it. I'm telling you right now, if you are into Overwatch, awesome. If you're not, get into it because oh, there's yeah. a lot of stuff happening between Overwatch oh. World League, mm -hmm, the Overwatch mm -hmm, World mm -hmm. Cup, which is currently going on, and, of course, now the Overwatch Contenders League. Mm -hmm. Let's go, guys. Speaking of going. <sighs> okay, voting options. Rocket League, Call of Duty, FIFA, and Quake. Oh, MK got her wish. Call you of start us Duty. Off there? Yes. CWL. The fifth annual Call of Duty Championship took place last weekend in Orlando, Florida. 128 players, 32 teams, faced off in the biggest COD event to date. The $1,525,000 prize pool was the second largest in Call of Duty history. Ooh, jump change. Okay. <laughs> Optic Gaming, which is a name you're going to hear a lot today, consisting of players Scump, Format, Karma, and Crim6. They lost to Team MDS in the winner's finals and were sent to the loser's bracket. Optic Gaming then defeated Luminosity Gaming 3 0 to earn their spot in the grand finals. It's true. So, Optic, strong start in game one. They won 250 out of three to. Wow, you know what? Never mind. 250 <laughs> to 135 on Retaliation Hardpoint. Mm. They lost game 26. Two to, game two, 6 to 2. You know, have you ever had one of those Ron Burgundy moments? It's happening all day today. <laughs> on throwback search and destroy, they won the set 3-1 and reset the grand finals bracket. So with momentum on their side, Optic Gaming swept the final set of grand finals with a clean 3 nothing victory. Sweep it's it up. Optic Gaming, a.k.a. the Green Wall's first COD World League Championship win. Okay, mm -hmm. Karma, now a three-time world champion. That's not a bad thing to... Mm. He should probably have one of those Letterman's jackets that says, like... Champion Ooh. one, champion two. Ooh, I like that. It's true. Mm -hmm. Crim6, now two-time world champion, and Scump and Formal are first-time champs. Basically, Optic proved why they are pretty much the COD darlings. Optic Gaming mm -hmm. went home with $600,000. Really Team Envious brought home 200 k while Luminosity Gaming 
got a sh- got a cool one hundred thou. Mm-hmm. You want to watch any more of the uh, videos on demand? Check out CallOfDuty.com slash esports. Easy Ooh, I'm glad you're on Team Slash, Ricario. Oh. I always get into it on Team Whack. Well, I don't team even. Slash. No, no, no. Mm-mm. Okay, I'm glad to no. know. Okay, thank yeah. you. All right, all right. It. Sit down, Ricario, if you're watching. Yeah, yeah. Stand <laughs> off. Stand down. Yeah. Yeah. He's fine. All right. He's at a different thing. Okay, so one of the goals of this show every week is to highlight the amazing people and events that happen in the esports and competitive gaming space and give them a little bit of the recognition that they deserve. It's That's such true. an incredible emerging industry, emerging genre of oh, entertainment. Mm. It's absolutely yeah. true. So there obviously are esports fans out there. Perhaps they don't know mm-hmm. they're as esports fans as they think they are because it's not binary. Not a, either you are or you aren't. It's a whole thing. <laughs> anyway, Sliding we scale like to of use e-sports. this. Mo- exactly. <laughs> we like to use this exact time and place to chat up different personalities in the scene. And this time, who do we have? Alex Cherry, an avid member of the Smash community and event director for Smash the Record. It's an upcoming charity event attached to St. Jude's. We love working for St. Jude's. It's so, true. hello, Alex. Welcome hey. to the show. Great. How, good. How you guys doing? Great. Uh, I can see. Uh, is this the office that esports built, or no? The office that esports built is definitely a lot smaller, a lot less nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they. We have to. We have to build from very small to get to get to where you need to go. You mm-hmm. got to grind. I get it. So yeah. So I guess uh, start off uh, by telling people who might not know who you are a little bit about yourself and what you do in esports and your relationship to Smash. So uh, Alex Cherry Costa, everyone can just call me Cherry. Uh, I started out as actually a Halo and Call of Duty guy and ended up jumping into the Smash community um, a couple of years ago, hosting a few events, and now I work over at uh, ESL full-time in Burbank, California. So this event, um, Smash the Record, uh, is happening next month, and it benefits St. Jude. Can you tell us a little more about the event and what it's about? Yeah. So Smash the Record is a four-day Super Smash Brothers and speedrunning marathon uh, where it runs 24 hours straight. So we have two streams that run over 80 hours and we pretty much host like fun donation events, side events. Uh, I used to host a lot of more serious tournaments, but what makes Smash Record so unique is that it's really fun and we have like pro players versus bad people is what we call them. So we'll have one pro versus 25 bad people and people can uh, donate to add more people to the event. We also have Iron Man's where we'll have Two professional players go like the full roster of characters they play against each other. We do uh, sort of dance parties. We did a mannequin challenge last year. Um, the main nice. thing with Smash Truckers is that it's a fun hangout event. It's not like a crazy hardcore, you know, esports where in your face, you know, ready to like destroy each other. It's <laughs> go have fun, hang out, but also raise money for a good cause. So, you know, speaking of that Smash community, you guys are known for throwing some great events great grassroots events specifically. Mm. How does this event carry that tradition forward today? So with grassroots events specifically in Smash, uh, Smash the Record is a huge thing because it does run throughout all hours of the day, and it's very, I would say, noob-friendly, um, where there's sort of unlimited friendlies. Mm-hmm. We host a lot of side events. Uh, there's no prize pool at the event whatsoever. All the money that people uh, put into the prize pool goes straight to St. Jude. And over the past two years, we've raised over $100,000. Oh, that's phenomenal. Okay, so our favorite question on the show, if you could tell skeptical people one thing that they should know about esports and why they should get involved or get interested, what would you say? So as far as uh, skeptical people about esports, I mean, you do need to have a competitive aspect to it. Uh, Me specifically, nobody knows this, but um, or not many people do, but I was a three-time All-American wrestler in college, and uh, going out and competing and like destroying someone was one of the coolest things ever, and (laughs) <laughs> carrying that over to video games where it's kind of like, you know, I don't care like, you know, who you are, what size you are or anything. I'm just going to be destroying you. Uh, but for esports, there's a lot more to it besides that, right? There's a lot of training. I compare it super close to professional sports, uh, you know, where there's, you know, some teams that need coaches. There's, you know, um, players who have to practice, they have to travel, they have to boot camp. Um, and sort of seeing the reward out of that, right? Like when you see Michael Jordan go out on the court and, you know, score, you know, uh, They've scored a crazy amount of points in a game, um, but also watching the same people place top five at events over and over, that's one of the coolest things ever. And I think that's, you know, with esports, there's a lot of really cool storylines, and especially in uh, 1v1 games, you kind of get that, like, UFC-style yeah. uh, smack talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, fighting game community, definitely known for their smack. What's the word that they, the Quarry always uses it? What is it, Alex? Beef, when, it's, it's, no, it's, it's, it's when you, like, all up in somebody's face, and I totally... Oh. 
Whose man's is this? No, in between, in between, uh, in between events. Am I totally uh, sound trash like talking? A, it is uh, trash talking. Twitter beef. Oh, I don't God, think. I can't there's a body. There's run, run back. Run back. Mm. Is that right? No, it anyway. <laughs> anyway, it's awesome, and that's exactly right. That's exactly one of the many reasons that the fighting community is such a darling, and mm. why people gravitate towards it so much. Yourself included, for sure. Well, first of all, we want to say thank you so much for gracing us with your presence and coming to us from, uh, you know. Another the, location. The, the office that East Force <laughs> did not build. Off the stops in South Florida. It was very, it was, it was very professional. Mm -hmm. I love it. Uh, Alex, well, so, uh, yeah, where, where can, people... can people find you and your work? So literally uh, at Raging Cherry on everything. Uh, you can go to it, you know, Twitter, any gaming avenue whatsoever, Steam, uh, Battle.net, at Raging Cherry, uh, also on YouTube. You can also go to uh, at Smash 4 Charity on Twitter. Um, that's where everything for Smash the Record comes up. And, uh, yeah, just look out for me there. Well, we will be awesome. sure to do that. Thanks so much, Thanks, Alex. Alex. See you guys. See ya. What a well, lovely, what so a lovely cool. young man. Oh, and Charity, I mean, that's actually gaming one of the things good, I love about the gaming community as a whole is mm -hmm. the millions that streamers and esports uh, groups have raised mm -hmm. for charities like St. Jude's doing great work, especially, I think, for kids and for inclusion. And it's, yeah. it's one of my favorite things, I think, about the gaming community as a whole is the incredible charity work. Couldn't agree with you more. All right, what do we got next? Let's talk voting. You had Rocket League, Mobile Gaming, FIFA, or Quake. What did we get? The winner is Rocket, Rocket League. League. Start us off, MK oh. Ives. The Rocket, uh, Rocket League Grand Finals for the Universal Open will be taking place at the Santa Ana Esports Arena August 26th and 27th. Ooh, that's coming in hot. Hey oh, exactly. So regional's been going on for weeks. So needless to say, this competition will be the most intense 2v2 Rocket League tournament yet. And there'll be plenty of action. You can look forward to watching teams from Splice, Cloud9, and Gale Force, plus plenty of other talented players as they duke it out for a share of the $100,000 prize pool. I'm telling you right now, prize mm. pools, I know it's the summertime, so esports is always going to be bigger. Mm -hmm. But like, prize mm. pools are out of control right now, and I mm -hmm. love it. And so, just yeah. going to keep growing. They especially are. With, with all the involvement that you're seeing from the larger entertainment mm -hmm. community pouring their funds into this, it's, it's going to get crazier. Exactly. Anyway. I was going to say, if you happen yeah. to live near Santa Ana, which has lovely wine country as well, but mm -hmm. they also have a fantastic esports facility. <laughs> Bam! Wine, Tickets are available. Esports. I mean, uh, come on. That's my, that's literally my, my idea of a great <laughs> night out. So otherwise, you can watch the competition live streamed on NBC Sports or from the NBC Sports app. Just a app. little. Just a like, little NBC Speaking nod. of real sports and esports. I think we need to stop calling it real sports now. I How think, about physical yeah. sports and esports? I'm telling you right now, gonna anybody toss that can out some do suggestions here. Let's just say anybody that can do 400 moves a minute. Oh, those this keystrokes! Is I'm telling you, this is why the 2024. I'm hoping. I don't think it'll actually happen because whatever. But Paris. Oh, Paris Lennox says it'll yeah, happen. Paris, Paris, is saying Paris they, they might include esports into the Olympics 2024. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You cannot catch it all. At, by that, I yeah. mean all of the Back Rocket, the Rocket League, League stuff we were just talking about. Uh, Twitch.com, twitch.tv slash faceittv. That's a lot of T's and a lot of V's, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Well, they'll have a fan rewards drop system for each live broadcast. All right. And well. voting for the segment, we got H1Z1, mobile gaming stuff, FIFA, tell you, H1. H1's getting big. <gasps> H1 and Pub. Oh, Yahtzee, what did I just say? Mm, H1Z1, I'll start this one off and say Battle Royale games are hot right now. It's true. H1Z1 was a huge part of DreamHack Hot Lana. It's the $250,000 pot to be split among two play modes. It was a premier event for the relatively new eSports. I mean, isn't that crazy? So in the solo tournament, 40 hopefuls joined 20 invitees to Battle Royale in three matches. Players are ranked according to their total points across three matches. But also got a cool hundy cash bonuses for each kill. <laughs> what a way to rack up I the I did not Benjamins. know that that was for each kill. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, player Sweet Dreams took home the $25,000 first prize, while second place player Prox was awarded a $3,000 bonus for having the most kills in the solo tournament finals. Boy, wouldn't that be nice every time you're mm. gaming that like, oh, here's oh, my got check a kill. from last night. 
Oh. <sighs> in the team tournament, it was anyone's match until the third and final round. Counterlogic Gaming won the team trophy, but not easily. Why, MK? Ooh. In game one, they had just one player survive to the end of the round. Like, and he spent most of the time hiding in the back of the car. I mean, that's also my Saturday night. <laughs> game two <laughs> flowed a bit better with three out of the five teammates surviving to the end. And game three was a little more dominant with four or five players surviving. But CLG, whew, let's Counter talk about it. Logic player Da FPS took home the most kills in the team round with 10 altogether, which is no easy feat. Uh, the next stop for the H1Z1 Elite Series is Dreamhack Winter, taking place December uh, 1st through 4th in Sweden. Ooh, it's hey, be cold and dark. It's true. I was just going to say, I was reading through chat because we do that here mm -hmm. and it is live. And uh, it's funny, I was under the impression this was the best show on the channel. And I mm. seem to have uh, someone on chat, um, Ethan, I think. E Ethan. 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 Uh, anyway, you know what? Is there some snack You know, talk? haters going to hate. So mm. uh, every mm. Thursday at 3 o'clock, uh, Pacific Standard is where you're going to find numero uno. Mm-hmm. Numero uno. Okay, do we, have, do we have another segment? I think we do. Let's transition Just, effortlessly, all shall right. we? All right, another segment. Let's squeeze it on in here. The U.S. <laughs> okay, okay, what do we got? Oh, Overwatch, yeah, so World here's Cup. the deal. Exactly. Overwatch. Mobile gaming. <laughs> FIFA or Quake. It's going to be <laughs> oh, Overwatch yeah, World Cup. Bring it in. Okay. Uh, the U.S. and U.K. teams will be moving on to BlizzCon mm -hmm. coming up. And, oh, my goodness, I don't even want to think about how quickly fall is coming up that's, on us here. too fast. After nearly sweeping the final Overwatch World Cup qualifier this weekend. Mm -hmm. So the event held in Santa Monica was the last mm -hmm. of four qualifying tournaments to determine which teams would be facing off in the main event. That what we just talked about, BlizzCon mm. 2017. The UK, who went undefeated through the qualifier, dominated their group competition, leaving Germany, Israel, and Belgium behind in the dust. It's true. So the US is almost equally dominant in their grouping, having only dropped one map, mm. Chinese Taipei, in the first phase. The US and UK teams will join China, France, Sweden, Australia, South Korea, and Canada. Uh, bring your maple syrup in competing at the main event at BlizzCon 2017 in Anaheim, November 3rd and 4th. BlizzCon's going to be quite th November 3rd and 4th. Just put it on your calendars mm -hmm. because if you have any notifications on any esports channel of any kind, you're going to see a lot going through your mobile device mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. that 3rd and 4th of November. Ooh, you think we can we'll squeeze remember. another segment in here? I think we can. Okay. All right. Uh. Pokémon, mobile gaming, FIFA or Quake? Oh, and finally Quake. Ah. Uh. Who here remembers Quake? Yeah, okay. It's up there. It is, in many ways, the elder statesman mm -hmm. of the esports community. Anyway, <laughs> the village elder. The village elder. <laughs> but let's talk about its version of esports. This year at A3, Bethesda announced their new esports competition that, of course, Quake World Championships, which will take place at QuakeCon in Dallas, Texas. That would be actually coming up here Whoa. not too long from now, August 24th through the 26th. Players from all over the world will battle each other in duel, which is solo competition, and sacrifice, which is 4v4 competition. Um, to qualify, players need to join the closed beta. From there, the top 32 duelers, as well as the top eight sacrifice teams from each region competed in the regional finals. Okay, so now at QuakeCon, the top 24 duelers who qualified online, along with the eight duelers who will qualify during QuakeCon, will go ahead to head in the global finals for a first place mm. prize of a hundred thousand doll hairs. The mm. top eight sacrifice teams will also go head to head for a first place prize of three hundred thousand dollars. So we're talking about just like we usual, we have online mm -hmm. where you can make or break, but right. you then you really make or break when you're under the lights mm. and in the arena. And the teams will compete in a double elimination bracket and matches will be the best of three. Exactly. Now on the dual side of the competition, there will be a few solo players you might recognize like Liquid Rafa, who was the 2016 QuakeCon dual champ, but most competitors mm -hmm. will be attempting to make a name for themselves through this competition. As for the teams that qualified for sacrifice, Team Liquid and Notofast might be the most recognizable, mm -hmm. but then again, teams are fighting still to establish themselves as fierce competitors in this new championship. That's true. So we're excited to see what comes out of QuakeCon this year, and you are too, I am guessing. If you would like to see more about QuakeCon and all that is Quake, go ahead and head to twitch.tv slash quakechampions or facebook.com slash quake to catch the action. Okay, so we've got upcoming tournaments that people can can check Let's out slash or through those. participate in them. Yeah, yeah. Forget the wax. Mm. Wait, that those are whack. Yeah, Ricari is whack for using whack. 
what okay. she said. What do we got? So, of course, we have the CSGO ESL Pro League Season mm -hmm. 6 coming up. On August 22nd, we got some serious stuff coming in hot next it's week, It's true, you guys. absolutely. Mm, but batting down the hatches. Yeah. Uh, it'll be shown every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We'll see a return of Season 5 champions, Team G2, eSports, yes. and we know yes, that we'll have some surprises in store for us to show here. Mm -hmm. uh, head on over to ProLeague.com slash CSGO for the full rundown when you get a chance. It's true. Pro League is great because it leads not that long into the upcoming E-League Season mm -hmm. 3. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> it's very exciting. Okay, let's talk our next, which is, of course, FIFA Interactive World Cup Grand Finals. They're happening this week in jolly old London, and we highly recommend you check out a match or two if you can. So there are some great personalities in the FIFA scene, and they know how to put on a show for those fans, that being yourself, myself, MK, mm -hmm, and everybody mm -hmm. here. You want to check out more about that? Head to FIFA.com slash Interactive World Cup. Man, I, I really hope Rikari watches the VOD, or maybe he's watching right now. So I hope can hear all the makes slashes. A gif yeah. of this. <clears throat> Gears of War. Over 30 Microsoft stores across the U.S., China, Canada, sorry, U.S., Canada, Puerto Rico, and Australia will be mm -hmm. holding Gears of War 4 tournaments that are free to enter and award Gears Pro Points and Esports Supporter Packs. Free to enter mm -hmm. at your local Microsoft store. Look this up, people. It's Love a great it. program to participate in. And we want you to have fun and maybe win a prize or two in your own hometown or at least somewhere close to it. Check out GearsOfWar.com to see if there's a location near you and sign up. It's true. Sign up. Mm. Well, you know what? I can't even transition for that. I was just going to say sign up to be here, but you don't need to. We'll be here each and every mm -hmm. Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific, on Mixer Channel 1, which is what you're watching us on anyway, so you already know. Be sure to watch this and past episodes on YouTube.com slash Mixer Channel 1, all one word. And follow us on Twitter at Watch Mixer. For more information and updates on the show, uh, to know what's happening in the wide world of esports. Also, tune into hashtag Esports Weekend on this same channel starting at 9 a.m. this Saturday as we'll be all broadcasting all esports all weekend long. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, we only show Mixer, uh, we only show esports content on Mixer Channel 1 on the weekend, so I hope you'll come back to tune in and check out that content. It's true. And until next week, Alvita Bye! We'll see you guys in Gamescom! Gamescom!